guys, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, JSCon for you, I think, really is a, a conference among conferences, uh, and it, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, so the, the, the name of this talk is uh, Two Problems. Um, it is, in fact, a talk about regular expressions. Um, if regular expressions are something that scare you, please take a seat and sit down. This talk is for you. If regular expressions are something that you love and feel very comfortable with, also, this talk is for you. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Sarah Saltrick Meyer. Uh, I'm a web developer based out of New York, uh, and I work for a company called BuzzFeed. Um, again, doing web dev. Um, so there's a, there's a really classic and wonderful joke about regular expressions. Um, some people, when confronted with a problem, think, I know, I'll use regular expressions. Now they have two problems. Uh, and you may have heard this joke from um, the person sitting next to you at your first job. Uh, that's certainly when I first heard it. But uh, the actual source of the quote is a guy named Jamie Zawinski on a Usenet group in 1997. Uh, and Jamie Zawinski was a um, Emacs uh, devotee. Uh, it approached the status of a religion for him, apparently. Uh, and he also hated Pearl with a passion. Uh, one of his other really meaty quotes is, uh, Pearl combines the power of C with the readability of postscript. So uh, clear, clearly a man of strong opinions and uh, pithy statements. Um, and now, why would he say this? Regular expressions are a great tool, aren't they? Uh, regular expressions, you can um, you know, use them in an HTML input box to uh, validate the, the um, form of, of input. Uh, obviously, you use them all the time um, when you're trying to match a pattern in text. Um, I've even seen websites where a lot of their routing wound up in a bunch of regexes in their CDN config. These are the things that uh, happen. So why would regular expressions be, uh, be a problem? Uh, well, I, I rather think it's because of things like this. Now, can, can you all actually read this here? Uh, raise your hand if you can read it. OK, OK. Um, so does anyone recognize this? Nasty scrum of characters and numbers. U.S. phone number. Thank you. Um, and wow, it's just gross, isn't it? It's just nasty. Uh, it looks like something you'd pick off the bottom of your shoe, programming-wise. Um, and the, the so the reason I think that people uh, regular expressions are 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 a, a problem, even as they solve problems for us, is this lack of comprehensibility. Um, we, when, I, when I personally need a new regular expression to use in my work, uh, I certainly know what I do. I Google it. So if I wanted the regular expression for a US phone number, I would just Google regular expression for a phone number and take that top Stack Overflow answer, wouldn't I? Uh, and probably most people would do the same. Um, but regular expressions are, are something more than uh, just something that we um, you know, can take somebody else's advice for. Uh, they're, 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 they're more than something where, um, you know, you find the experienced senior dev in the room, or maybe the, the one person who you know is a, a regex whiz, and uh, you go ask them for it. Um, they can also be something like this. Um, so I, I totally stole this, this beautiful graph from um, JavaScript The Good Parts, a, a classic. Um, and this is a description of uh, the various ways that white space can be evaluated, that code can sort of not be evaluated within JavaScript. And let's um, run through them together. So we have this, uh, this top line here. Obviously, a space will just be evaluated as a space. A tab will just be evaluated as a tab. And a line end, similarly, won't, nothing will happen. Uh, but then we get down into here. Uh, so if the, the parser is running, and it hits a uh, forward slash, uh, well then, if it sees another forward slash, and then it sees any character except for a line end, and it can see any number of characters, uh, and then a line end. Well, what is that? What is two forward slashes with any number of characters and then a line end in JavaScript? Of course, it's a comment, yes. Uh, and then it, it gets a little bit more complicated, of course, for our, our beautiful multi-line comment. Uh, we have the forward slash, we have an asterisk, Ooh, and then I can optionally, you see it's not on the path here, I can optionally have another forward slash, uh, but then I have to have any character except the slash and the asterisk, and I can have as many of those as I want, uh, but I have to finish off with another asterisk before my final forward slash. 
And the, the real meaning of this uh, diagram here is that you cannot, um, you can have slashes and asterisks within your comment, but if you have a slash and then an asterisk, you've closed the comment uh, and you are done. So, uh, gosh, well, what does this have to do with regular expressions? This is a regular expression I wrote for you guys, very specially. It really broke my brain. It felt like a test in school. And uh, because I, I did actually used to have to do this in school, I would have um, a little graph like that, a railroad diagram, and I would have to turn it, it back into um, a regular expression. Not with Perl syntax, though. This is Perl syntax, which of course is also used in JavaScript. Uh, so without going into it too much, um, we have uh, the sort of simple cases. We have a space here, a tab. Um, ooh, and then it starts to get complicated. We have these escaped slashes. Uh, and then line ends, and then this incredibly nasty thing uh, is the, uh, you can have asterisks and slashes, but they can't be next to each other unless you're closing out. Uh, so what exactly is a regular expression, my gosh? Um, they were defined in the 1950s before there was such a thing as an automatic computer, really. Um, so they, they, like a lot of computer science concepts, they predate the actual machines that we do our work on. Uh, and they were defined by a, a wonderful guy named Stephen Colclane, who uh, you love, even if you don't know who he is, because he is responsible for this little star, the clean star, uh, which you probably use all the time. Um, and of course, uh, he, the clean star is not part of regular expressions per se. It's rather, I would say, a notation that we very frequently use in regular expressions. And probably the most commonly used of all pot pattern matchers is take everything, star. Uh, and yes, I, I, I love this very much. I think it's very pretty and also useful. Um, so what exactly makes a regular expression? Well, it's a, it's a set of characters that uh, describe other characters. Um, with origins in the attempt to describe natural language in a, in a computable way. Uh, so we have a, a Boolean or, very familiar to you all, it's that, it's that pipe. Um, we have the concept of grouping, the notion that if I have A, B, C, D, or A, X, Y, D, then that is equivalent to A, B, C, or X, Y, D. Uh, and then lastly, quantification. Um, these, uh, this syntax may be familiar to you, um, the question mark is, uh, I believe, zero or one. Uh, the star is, of course, zero or many. And the plus is uh, one, one or, or more. Uh, so we've, we've got all that. We, we kind of know what we're talking about here. Uh, but let's try to place regular expressions in a sort of wider world of concepts, a wider world of attempts to describe language. Uh, and Actually, you know, we, we think of ourselves as web developers, we do code, but code is language, and it is specifically an attempt to translate human language into language that uh, computers can understand. Uh, and regular expressions are just one uh, in a whole set of toolboxes for doing this. Uh, and they were described by this, this gentleman, who may be familiar to you, this is Noam Chomsky, uh, who, um, in addition to his uh, wonderful political opinions, um, also is responsible for the Chomsky hierarchy of grammars. Uh, so as you can see, regular expressions are down here. They're the most limited subset of this Chomsky hierarchy. Uh, and then we work our way up through the context-free, the context-sensitive, and the recursively enumerable languages. Well, what on earth are these? Well, actually, the, the type zero, unrestricted grammar, is something that you are also all uh, familiar with I mean, and I say I'm familiar with Turing machines in the same way that I am familiar with regular expressions. I'm certainly not an expert. I just know that they help me do the things that I need to do. Uh, so what exactly is a Turing machine? Well, this, this here is a Turing machine that um, somebody bu built with Legos. Uh, as you can see, it has little wheels, so it can um, go back and forth on a tape. Uh, and we also have a, a beautiful quote, um, which I'm going to read out for you uh, in case it's, it's a little bit hard to read. Um, a Turing machine is an unlimited memory capacity obtained in the form of an infinite tape marked out into squares, on each of which a symbol could be printed. At any moment, there is one symbol in the machine. It is called the scanned symbol. The machine can alter the scanned symbol, and its behavior is in part determined by that symbol, but the symbols on the tape elsewhere do not affect the behavior of the machine. However, the tape can be moved back and forth, this being one of the elementary operations of the machine. 
Any symbol on the tape may therefore eventually have an innings. So that's a quote from Alan Turing, I think in, a, in addition to being a, a brilliant computer scientist and truly the father of the industry that we work in now, um, he was a, a lovely writer as well. Uh, so Alan Turing, of course, um, committed suicide after he began to be persecuted by the British government for being gay. Um, I think there's a lot of irony in the fact that a man who contributes so much to, who contributes so much to our understanding of, of patterns and communication um, literally died for not fitting a pattern that was prescribed by, uh, by the society that he lived in. Um, well, moving right along, type one grammars. They're boring. Nobody, I don't really understand what the use case is for them. It seems to be mostly theoretical. Um, but they, they are, uh, they're called context sensitive because they come with a, a little bit of context. Um, so I, I don't know them. I don't know her. Uh, the type two grammars, on the other hand, um, are, I'm not going to read out all this math for you. It comes from Wikipedia. I do encourage you to look this up. Um, but most programming languages are interpreted by computers as type two languages. So as we're moving up this, this hierarchy here. Um, and type two has something extremely important. Uh, type two languages have a stack. So you'll, you'll note that in a regular, you'll, of course in a regular expression, there's no concept of memory. Uh, you are only, eval you don't know um, as you're matching that pattern the, the things that you've seen before. But once you have the introduction of a stack, you can keep track of the past uh, and use it to help you evaluate the, the current input. Uh, and then type three grammars are our regular expressions, and they are um, equivalent to finite state automata, which is something that you also may have used. Perhaps you've used a, like a state machine library um, for some, some context at work. Uh, and so regular expressions are mathematically equivalent to finite state automata. They can always be translated um, in between each other. Uh, and this, this is a picture from my native city. These are some turnstiles. Uh, at a uh, subway stop in Harlem. And uh, turnstiles, subway turnstiles, are actually one of the uh, classic examples of a state machine, and I'll show you how. Uh, so the, the way that a turnstile used to work, now I'll pretend that the coin is a metro card swipe, because coins are very obsolete, unfortunately. Um, if it, the machine is locked, uh, then no matter how much you push, nothing will happen. You return to the locked state. But if you put in a coin, uh, then it, you are in the unlocked state. And no matter how many coins you put in, uh, it will still be unlocked. You have done nothing to it. I've actually done this. I've swiped my Metro card accidentally multiple times, spending uh, $275 each time. Very frustrating. But if you then push through the, the turnstile, uh, you return to that locked state. Uh, and you can only get out of it again by putting in a coin. So um, you, you could actually write a regular expression uh, for this. Um, where you, you represent the, uh, the, the coin, and coin and push would be uh, your, your letters, your characters in it, and uh, the unlocked and unlocked states uh, would be the, the potential states that you could get to. Uh, so one thing that you, you may have heard, um, it's another thing that I heard sort of uh, secondhand at my first job, is that you can't parse HTML with a regular expression. Um, and the reason for that is the, the same thing that I said about the, um, the uh, context-free grammars. They have a stack, right? Um, so with, to parse HTML, we need that stack. We need to um, put down the HTML tag, and then we need to put down the body tag, and then we need to put down you know, our, our divs, our headers, and we, we build up that stack. And then as we unparse our, as we get to the end of the execution, we start popping uh, those, uh, those elements off the stack as we see their closing tags. And uh, that, that's how we get proper HTML parsing. So that, again, because regular expressions do not have a stack, do not have a sense of memory, cannot be done um, with, a with a true regular expression. But uh, the regular expressions that you use in programming languages like JavaScript, which takes its implementation from Perl, uh, and Perl, I think, is, has been the most significant uh, influence on the development of regular expressions uh, in sort of day-to-day -day programming. Um, you know, I, I personally, one of the very first things I ever had to do that somebody paid me to write code for was to write a bunch of Perl scripts to uh, parse some XML documents and put them into a different directory structure. It's a good task for an intern, actually. You, you learn a lot. Um, and so uh, Perl regular expressions uh, have 
features that uh, like um, look those negative look-aheads that make them no longer uh, pure regular expressions, but capable of a wider variety of tasks than um, true, uh, strictly formal regular expressions are. Um, so for that, I, I have a quote from Larry Wall, uh, who, who did uh, create Perl, um, so probably the worst enemy of that Jamie Zwinski guy quoted earlier. Uh, regular expressions are only marginally related to real regular expressions. Nevertheless, the term has grown with the capabilities of our pattern matching engines, so I'm not going to try to fight linguistic necessity here. A wise man. Uh, I will, however, generally call them regexes, or regexen, when I'm in an Anglo-Saxon mood. Thank you, Larry Wall. Pearl is very good. I like it. Um, so what's the difference, really? Um, those deterministic finite automata, uh, regular expressions, um, meet the criteria the deterministic criteria in particular is important to remember, um, that each of its transitions is uniquely determined by its source state and input symbol. Um, and that reading an input symbol is required for each state transition. Um, with the power of modern regexes, um, this, these criteria are no longer met. Uh, and so what we, what we work with, the thing that you call, oh, we'll solve it with a regex, um, has actually become quite divorced from the theoretical underpinnings uh, of the concept, lovely as those are. So um, again, a, a regex has only its state, and a Turing machine has memory. Uh, and regexes, uh, therefore, are appropriate for um, a sort of surface level parsing of information. Um, they are very useful, and they help us a lot. They still are, are only one, one tool for us. And uh, as, with many things, uh, as with many things in programming, right, a, a limit is not necessarily bad. Um, if you are using a limited set of tools, you uh, will see, may see um, better performance because there's less that it has to do. Um, whereas, so regexes exist then in um, a very limited, a limited world that is connected to a, a much broader world of computation and of the attempt to let computers understand humans. So um, there's a sort of a, a sad ending to a lot of the attempts to describe human language that men like Clean and uh, Chomsky were working on. They, they really wanted, um, and this was sort of the, the post-war attempt to turn human language into a set of rules that machines could understand easily. Um, and the, the notion that we would be able to find um, a theoretical description of all human language. I think as programmers, you all know better than anyone else that we are never going to achieve that, right? We're probably never going to write a program that uh, deterministically understands human input. And this is actually um, the, the rise of machine learning and non-deterministic algorithms uh, to, to parse language um, is a recognition of the notion that uh, we, we, we don't have, the, we, we'll never find a true answer, a correct answer. We can only throw a bunch of guesses at the wall and uh, determine which one is, is closest to our understanding as humans. Uh, so I will leave you with, um, there, was, there wasn't much JavaScript in this talk, right? So it's right here. Um, this is about the implementation of regular expressions in JavaScript. Um, of course, you may declare a regular expression in one of two ways, um, either with those lovely backslashes uh, or with um, the uh, regex uh, constructor. And um, so the previous one is for a value that will never change, uh, whereas if you want to construct a regex dynamically and have it evaluated at runtime, please use the constructor. Uh, and enjoy writing regular expressions in JavaScript. I certainly do. So um, here. I, I've been thinking a lot about regular expressions since um, making this talk. I sort of have a, a vision of applications um, as being modeled like that turnstile of uh, designers um, making finite state automata to describe the different states that an application could have, uh, and then a programmer somehow turning that into a regular expression. I don't really know what that would look like, but it would be cool. Um, it's also really, uh, finite state automata are really great for games and uh, for AI in games. Um, so write that with a regular expression. Um, I think you could also make some cool web art with regular expressions. It'd be cool if somebody did that. Um, you know, obviously writing a chat bot, that's, that's too obvious for words. Uh, but most of all, um, 
I think that a lot of us, because we're web developers, because we are, we are eager to take any tool that works, um, we, if we don't know about the theoretical underpinnings of this, they can remain very opaque and difficult to understand. Um, I have a math background, and I still look at the Wikipedia definitions of these things, and oh, it breaks my brain. But uh, knowledge and education, it is a treasure. And uh, knowing how things work, even if it's not going to help you in your day to day, um, is I think something that is very beautiful and very useful. And it will enrich your understanding of what you do on a day to day basis. Um, so seek out theory even, and also don't blame other people for not having knowledge of theory. Um, get as much as you can and give as much to other people. Uh, and I think that's the way to be a truly effective programmer. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it was a pleasure to speak to all of you.